If you were growing up in the 2010s, chances are you're familiar with this character here. This is Omnom, the main character of the Cut the Rope series. They were some of the most recognizable games on the App Store, right next to games like Fruit Ninja, Temple Run, Doodle Jump, Angry Birds, and Plants vs. Zombies. Even having a massively successful YouTube channel, with the most popular videos bringing in tens of millions of views each. But over the years, as with everything else, Cut the Rope has largely faded from the public eye. So in this video, I'm gonna go through the history of the series to find out what Zeptolab's been doing with it over the years in an attempt to find out what led to the current state of this beloved series. What killed Cut the Rope? In 2008, Apple held a press conference showcasing the features of the first iPhone. Most importantly, they showed that it could play games that were downloaded through the Apple App Store. The game they chose to show off was Super Monkey Ball, and people began to get excited on what other game releases they would see on mobile. But something happened that nobody would have expected. The people who were the most successful at marketing and producing the most successful console or PC games weren't the most successful in the mobile game market. The ones who would have the most success were actually the small indie game startups. And after 2009, when PopCap and Rovio released their chart-topping games, another, much smaller company would have a hit of their own. Zeptolab was founded by twin brothers Yefim and Semyon Voinov in 2010. The word Zepto is a math prefix for 10 to the power of negative 21. It was used to show how small of an operation they were really running. The brothers learned how to code in the 90s all on their own. And another big thing that separates Zeptolab from the competition was the fact that they never received any outside funding from investors. They were completely on their own. And that's what makes what's about to happen even more shocking. They released their very first game on October 4th, 2010, and that game was the first Cut the Rope. I think a big reason the game was so successful has to do with the release time. Again, Plants vs. Zombies and Angry Birds are two other really successful mobile games developed and released by independent studios. And while PopCap released best-selling games before, Rovio is a good example of an indie studio being able to completely overtake the market with one game release. And Zeptolab was able to do the same thing with their very first game, a feat most game developers could only dream of achieving in their entire career. The game went on to get nearly 1 billion downloads, 300 million of which were in its first year of being available, funding the company's future endeavors and making the brothers millions of dollars. After seeing the success of the first game, Zeptolab did the same thing that everyone else would do in that situation. They went for the Rovio route and quickly started putting out sequels that acted more like expansions, having new features while also having enough reused assets to save time on making the new games. Cut the Rope Holiday Gifts was released just two months after the first one. It was only temporarily available for a little while in December 2010, and then it was removed, being relisted for a few other years. It was basically more of the same, but with a Christmas skin. The next year we got Cut the Rope Experiments, yet another reskin, but this time the box looks a little bit different. And there are also some new mechanics as well. And two years after that, we got Cut the Rope Time Travel. All of these were games that incorporated new features into the formula, but that wasn't the only avenue for spreading the Cut the Rope brand, or should I say, the Omnom brand. At the end of 2011, Zeptolab even made the pilot for the main character Omnom to have his own television series, Omnom Stories, which premiered on both television and YouTube in late 2012. They did especially well on YouTube, with each and every episode of the original series gaining over 10 million views, and 60 million on the pilot alone. The show had a massive reach, so large that you might even know the character of Omnom without even knowing about the Cut the Rope games, however unlikely that may be. In late 2013, we'd see the release of Cut the Rope 2. As a direct sequel, it does what you'd expect. It finally gives an upgrade to the graphics, and it adds in a mix of both the classic gameplay and all new features. Being a more modern mobile game, much like the second Plants vs. Zombies, Cut the Rope 2 introduced microtransactions. However, that's not their only method of monetization. 
They also have a $20 starter bonus, which could remove ads, among other things, as well as a VIP membership, where you could pay monthly in order to get various in-game things. Wait, hold up, did that say weekly? The thing that separates this installment from the rest of the series are the use of external characters, friends that help Omnom out on his adventures. This is actually something Rovio did. They made Angry Birds 2 after several other sequels, although this one was actually released two years earlier. And much like Angry Birds 2, Cut the Rope 2 was very successful, getting over 100 million downloads on Google Play alone. The next year, Zeptolab really started branching out to other genres, releasing a spin-off called My Omnom, which was their take on the My Talking Tom, Duck Life, or Pooh type games, where you feed, interact, and play with your own little Omnom. While the concept has been done before, this is also the first time we've seen Omnom as a 3D model. I think it looks cursed as hell, but hey, they added a woman, so extra points for a diverse cast of characters. Cut the Rope Magic came the next year, and it's actually more ambitious than you might expect. When you hear the title and that it has a gimmick, you'd assume it's like holiday gifts, experiments, or time travel, but they didn't just reuse assets and call it a day. They made the game look much nicer with its lighting, and the gimmick is pretty good too. You have the ability to turn Omnom into various other forms, like a fish or a ghost. The most interesting thing to note here is that this is actually the last game in the original Cut the Rope saga. Everything after would either be an alternative type of game, or the remaster later on. The series kept going hard with the spin-offs as well, releasing Omnom Bubbles the same month. This one was basically just those bubble-popping games like the one you'd see on Facebook or Angry Birds. Omnom Maya Papaya is a wacky one. It's a match 3 game that quite literally revolves around Omnom, even though he doesn't really do anything to affect the gameplay. Food appears, and you have to get them out of the way by arranging them in sets of three in a row. It somewhat reminds me of Zuma, but even then, the comparison is only really superficial. 2019 brought us two more Omnom games. Where's Omnom? And Omnom Merge. Omnom Merge plays like every other merge game. You feed monsters and merge them together to get other monsters. Where's Omnom is a lot more interesting. This is actually a game for the Gear VR, which was Samsung's phone VR device. It puts you in the setting of a lab, and you need to interact with objects to find Omnom, or else you'll mess up the space-time continuum and ruin the whole universe or something. Omnom Run is a game that came out in early 2020, and it's about what you'd expect. It's a three-lane endless runner, akin to Subway Surfers and Minion Rush, and Sonic Dash, and Tag with Ryan, and any other silly little runner game on the App Store. It's really just another genre of game that Omnom was able to invade into. And lastly, we have Cut the Rope Remastered, which is actually the most recent installment in the franchise, released in 2021 on Apple Arcade. And I'd say it's actually a really good remaster. It isn't trying to be a remake, so it doesn't have to follow the original game verbatim. They also chose to go with 3D models. Throughout the game, you can feed this little baby, which is actually Omnom's child. That means these two canonically fu- The gameplay is pretty much the same as the other games, just some simple puzzles that incorporate new mechanics every once in a while. But here's the thing. Throughout the release of all these Cut the Rope games, Zeptolab was also working hard on creating other games, completely unrelated to their original flagship series. A lot of similarities can be made to Angry Birds developers Rovio, especially the comparisons between the spin-off games. But unlike Rovio, while they only started producing non-Angry Birds games after it was too late to make an impact, Zeptolab continued to release other non-Cut the Rope titles, always making sure to keep things fresh by only releasing a handful of Cut the Rope games, at most two a year, dispersed between other titles. And they actually found some success in doing so. The first non-Cut the Rope game was Pudding Monsters in late 2012. The game follows the same logic as its predecessor. It's another level-based puzzle game, featuring monsters where you can collect up to three stars. That game did fairly well in its own right. Then a few years later, we got King of Thieves, another game that did pretty well. Then, after a couple Cut the Rope games, we got a game that did exceedingly well. Have you ever heard of Cats? Crash Arena Turbo Stars is a game that was made by Zeptolab in 2017, and it's a game that has grown a massive community of its own, without any connection to Cut the Rope. The game has over 50 million downloads on the Google Play Store, as well as a YouTube channel with over 1 million subscribers. It's highly impressive that they were able to catch a second win, and Cats is even more popular than Cut the Rope at times. 
There were other unrelated Zeptolabs games after Cats 2, like Bullet Echo, Robotics, Evo Pop, and finally Downhill Smash in late 2021. All of these games did pretty well, but nowhere near as well as Cats or the Cut the Rope games, which is to be expected as they were always on the side. If I had to point to a flaw Zeptolab did to cause THE DEATH OF THE FRANCHISE, I guess I can point towards how inherently child-focused the series had become after the first few games. I can't think of anyone over the age of maybe 7 or 8 who would choose to sit down and watch the show, or want to play a merge or endless runner just because it features Omnom. I feel they may have lost their ageless appeal that way, even if it most likely increased the monetary gain. But unlike the vast majority of other mobile games, <coughs> Zeptolab actively continues to update and perform maintenance on their legacy titles, to ensure that they can remain playable, even on the most modern devices. So from what I can tell, Zeptolab never did anything inherently wrong. They branched out to other mediums, and even made better and higher caliber games over the years. I guess the only real explanation for the decline of Cut the Rope could have been the lack of spreadability that other popular franchises have. FNAF has lore, and Minecraft has mods. These factors give reasons to spread the game to everyone else you know, and it keeps the games relevant for years on end. There obviously wasn't anything they could have done to keep Cut the Rope as the center of attention forever, especially since it's a mobile game with a limited number of levels. Sometimes, people just move on, and Omnom's days of eating candy are left in the past.